let's say everybody here were consumers and we want cheap, very fast services and with high quality. But let's uh, discuss today what this motto really means. Okay. This pyramid comes from the 50s, 60s. It's the Abraham Maslow's theory about the hierarchy of needs. So Maslow claimed that people need to satisfy specific needs before they move to the next steps. We understand that first of all we need to secure our food, our shelter, and then we can move to the next step of securing uh, our safety. We want to, to, to have job security as well. And after that, if we satisfy those needs, we start looking around to friendship, to social uh, relations, and gradually we go up to the highest level. We can give back to the society. And this theory is still taught in many management classes. It's, it's fundamental, and although it has been disputed a little bit uh, about promoting an ego, However, if you think your lives and how you make your choices, it's rather true. So when we don't have something that satisfies our basic needs, to, to eat, to drink, then of course we're not going to do, uh, let's say, take care of uh, our friends. We have our own problems, we cannot survive. We're not going to volunteer for any social activities. So, today we have other needs, of course, it's uh, in this era. You will find many versions of this pyramid, like internet Wi-Fi, battery, or coffee here in the Netherlands. Uh, however, I'm going to stay a little bit in the classic theory of Maslow. Another, uh, so coming back to the motto that we inherited from the Industrial Revolution that has been so much injected in our lives. It's for everybody so natural when we go online to buy things, when we go to shop, to find a product that satisfies everything. We want everything to be cheap, everything to be of high quality and everything to be delivered fast. When you play with your smartphones, of course, you want to, for them to, to respond to your requirements very fast. At the same time, of course, to be of high quality, to have a great display, and you need to buy it in a very good price. And you can find, even if you Google, many companies that promise to consumers that they can offer services and goods with these, under these, characteristics. Great quality, very cheap, and very fast. So this is the second part. Maslow pyramids of needs and this model. However, what does this mean in our modern life, the complex world that we live in? We as consumers, having this in mind, actually we trigger competition. <coughs> First, in a, lo in a very let's say, local level. So the market around us tries to satisfy, to, do, to gain the trust of consumers, and then to claim that they offer the best, fastest, and cheapest products. And this, of course, due to the fact of globalization and interactions is propagated across the globe. And you can see there on the internet many figures, charts that present this competition. This, in our minds, makes sense. It's fully acceptable and comes back to us. So from local to global, we now as consumers do not affect just the market in our town, our city, or our country, but our demands affect the market worldwide. 
there is no such a thing now as local industry. Almost all industry sectors are international. So we need to keep in mind that when we ask for all these nice characteristics of goods, that we affect the global market. It's like the butterfly effect, if you have heard about it. So the third thing is the Rasmussen theory. Say that the companies, in order to be sustainable and profitable, they are constrained by three things. First of all, it's economy, the cost. They need, of course, to be efficient. And how do we make efficient uh, organizations? How do we reduce the cost of running our uh, business? By introducing new technology, automation, or reducing salaries, or reducing welfare costs for our employees, or just reducing uh, our staff. This is the only way we can do it. The other side of this triangle is the workload. So what can you do? You can reduce staff, but you need, of course, fast production, you need high quality, meaning that you've got to increase the task load of your employees. So you have half of people doing the work that was uh, done by 10 people. And the third tri uh, side of the triangle is safety. At the same time, you need to ensure that you're safe. It's of very high interest for all of us to feel and be safe. So based on those three concepts, the Maslow Pyramid and our motto from the industry era and resolution theory, uh, I made the research and tried to, to see if those all theories can be combined and mean something, if, if we have figures, if we can quantify things. So the idea was if the average does cloud in an organization in combination or independently from the average salary are associated with the accidents happen due to human error. The task load, you remember, is one side of the pyramid there. It comes to the, the, the security of the job as well, and the satisfaction from the very low levels of Maslow pyramid. And the average salary, of course, is clearly connected with the basic needs. The accident due to human error comes to safety, which is the second level of Thomas Blue's theory. So let's see what happened between them. In order to do that, I visited a large aviation company, and they looked there for data, information. What type of data? How many employees they had for 13 years period? How much they spent for employment costs? What was uh, the amount of flying hours this airline operated and how many accidents they had due to human error. So I found information mainly for two uh, professional groups, pilots and engineers. And after I gathered all this information, I conducted some statistical tests. And the results were very, very interesting. So the accidents due to human error were negatively correlated with the salary, meaning that the less the salary people were getting, the more the accidents due to human error. And the opposite side, the task load was positively correlated. So the more people were producing, the more let's say the work pays, the more the pressure to produce, the more the accidents due to human error. Even more interesting is the fact that when we're controlling for salary, so in statistical calculations we maintain the salary steady, then the task load did not affect the accidents due to human error. So people, if they had a cost and salary, if they could satisfy their needs there and they could project how they're going to satisfy those needs to survive it in the future, they didn't mind that much about the task load. And on the other side, when we're controlling the task load, keeping that steady, then indeed the salary was highly correlated, negatively correlated with the accidents due to human error. 
meaning that people are more susceptible to decreases, fluctuations of salaries and income in general than they are in the task load. Very, very interesting results. And those were published um, in, in a scientific journal. And we are thinking of extending our research to other organizations and to see what uh, figures we can find, of course, and what correlations will come out of this. However, I need to point that, of course, it's not only the task load and the salary that play a role. It doesn't mean that if you decrease the task load and you, you will provide your employees a good salary that satisfies their needs, that no accident will happen. We have many, many factors. Environmental factors, organizational factors, policies, regulations. We have cultural issues that play a role um, in safety. However, it was interesting to find those correlations for the first time to quantify the connection between salary, task load, and accidents, meaning safety. So, what is my suggestion and what can we do? First of all, we need to revisit and be aware of this hierarchy of needs of Maslow. It's an old theory, but still valid. You are consumers. I am a consumer. But in the left part, let's see our perspective reward. We need to understand that sometimes we cannot ask from people to produce safety, to produce quality, where we don't provide to them the basics. You cannot ask from your friends to be very social, to be uh, to enjoy with you things, to go out to the movies and cinema, enjoy life. When your friends do not feel secure, do not feel safe, they strive to find a job. They have financial problems in the family. So try to explain some behaviors behind the reactions you see in, your, in the society, in your family, in your school. And discover a little bit why people do not easily go to the self-actualization level. Something misses. Is missing. Something doesn't go well with the low hierarchy levels there. And you can feel it yourself. When you don't feel well, you feel insecure, then of course, security, safety, and of course, survival had high priority. On the other side, we have the fast, good, cheap goods. And you can see in this figure there, there's this, in the middle, there is no point, there is no conjunction point. You cannot have everything in life. When you, as consumers, press for everything, then you become a problem of the system. When you press the market, you press a competition, to make goods and services very fast, very good and cheap, then inevitably you go and disturb the Rasmussen triangle of sustainability. Uh, so what happens? Your needs, your requirements, the competition will affect the employees in an organization very far from you. Maybe you cannot see people working on the factories that our smartphones, laptops, tablets are produced. You can see only displays. You don't know what's behind. But this is the reality. You cannot have all three. We cannot have all three. We need to focus, depending on what the service or the good we want to buy is, just to do fast or good, could be. Cheap and fast, yes, it could be. Cheap and good could be. So this is this is my message. You are the young, huh? the generation. You are the ones that are going to change the world. So efficiency, it's not it should not be the first priority, the highest priority. Profits and 
high quality. You know, we need to change the world, to step back to the hierarchy of needs, and to see and ask ourselves, what am I demanding now from the market? You are the, the, the market of tomorrow. You will be spread around the globe, different zones, and you will never know how your demands will actually affect your costume now in the future. But the employee will be actually constrained by your demands and will find ways to satisfy your greed, if I may say. So, thank you very much for your attention.